Hey, what's going on, you guys? It's Aces High. Uh, I've been away for a while. I've been uh, doing some stuff. I'm back. I'm, I'm ready to have some fun. Uh, I'm going to kick it right off with a little video on World War II. You, you guys know I'm fascinated with World War II. Don't get me wrong. I love the Napoleonic series, and I didn't realize I loved it until I watched it, but World War II kills it. So uh, this one's always been very interesting to me, and uh, like it's always interested me, and I never realized why. Uh, it's a video titled, Why Did So Many German Officers Flee to uh, Argentina After World War II? Why Argentina out of everywhere in the world, you know? And it's, I mean, it's a known fact. That's where they went for the most part. Um, yeah, it's just, it's interesting, and I'd like to figure out why. So I'm watching that exact video on uh, the channel Knowledge of today. Uh, if you guys haven't, you know, liked or followed me, hit that button, help me out. I'm trying to hit that, uh, that 2,000 likes before the end of the year. Or 2,000 subs before the end of the year. Anyway, uh, I'm going to sit back, I'm going to shut up, go grab yourself a drink, and let's get watching, okay? After World War II, thousands of German officers and wartime collaborators who supported the regime from France, Croatia, and other parts of Europe were looking for a new home. Many of them knew that they might be trialed and judged for their crimes and actions. Their goal was to flee, preferably as far away from the Nuremberg trials as possible. The question okay. is not about the reason of their running, which is obvious, but why did so many of them choose Argentina as their new home? Power in numbers, I guess. When the Allies raised their flags in Berlin, and when the German instrument of surrender was signed on the eve of May 8, 1945, one thing was clear for these criminals and collaborators. Germany, and even the whole European continent, wasn't a safe place for them to stay or hide. Even if the entire regime collapsed sure. and the war was over in Europe, that didn't mean the entire network that they had garnered had collapsed. Former admirers were still there. It's not like World War II ended in one day in 1945 and suddenly everyone realized how horrible the regime had been. Even after their defeat, there were many powerful men in Europe who had favored the cause and continued to do so. Just as an example, Spain was a neutral country, but was a friendly state and supporter of Germany. Spain was okay. ruled by Francisco Franco yeah. and had been a tired and neutral country because of its civil war. For some time, many fugitives would find themselves in a safe spot here, but will use Spain as a bridgehead to other destinations. Also, some Swiss important leaders had been outspoken in their support of Germany. These men were in a position to help out. Even the Catholic Church was helpful for some of these fugitives. Several high-ranking church officials actively aided in their escape. There was a window of time really? to escape justice and possible trials. Those who wanted that. to flee had to consider their options in a short period of time in order to hide elsewhere and adopt new identities. Across the ocean, in Argentina, President Juan Domingo Perón was more than ready to welcome those former Axis members with open arms. President Perón was an admirer of the German ideology of that time. He really? helped numerous war criminals to flee okay. with the support of his own diplomats and intelligence agents deployed in Europe. Arg See, now that makes a lot of sense. If he's such a big supporter, yeah, why not go there? And uh, Antarctica. <laughs> Argentina is so freaking far away. I mean, it's it's across an ocean. It's, it's a, you know, if you go directly across to North America and the down, it's two continents. If you sail across, it's one. But, you know, basically my point is it's it's practically halfway around the world. Argentine supported ways for their transit through passages from Italy and Spain to Buenos Aires. During World War II, Argentina clearly favored the Axis because of its president and probably because of close cultural ties with Germany, Italy, and Spain. Argentina was a former Spanish colony and they achieved independence at the beginning of the 19th century. Through decades-long migrations okay. of Italians and Germans created strong ties to these European countries. Argentina was a pro-Italian and pro-Germany country, and this was due to the fact that most Argentines were of Spanish, Italian, or German descent. Really? The there German were that Germans many Germans down there? Sympathy, and the two countries created special links between each other. 
in Argentina were many German spies and also Argentine officers and diplomats held important positions in Europe. Perón's government admired some totalitarian behaviors and tried to lead his country more in the direction of large military parades and militarization. Many important and influential Argentines, as wealthy businessmen or members of the government, were openly supportive of the Axis cause. Even the huh. president, Juan Domingo Perón himself, had served as an adjunct officer in the Italian army in the late 1930s. Really? Thus, there were special bonds between Germany, okay. Italy, and Argentina. That's just something I but never knew. Even in this situation, Argentina would eventually declare war on the Axis powers within just a month before the war ended. But some Argentine agents worked to help defeated German officers to escape after the war. There was a financial reason for Argentina to accept these men. Some wealthy Germans and Argentine businessmen of German descent were willing to pay the way for escaping runners. In 1945, as the Allies were cleaning the last remnants of the Axis, for many it became clear that the next great conflict would come between the capitalist USA and the communist USSR. Yeah. Some people, including Perón and some of his advisors, predicted that a new world conflict would break out soon between the Allies and the communists. Yeah, it's really interesting. Growing up with my, uh, with my parents' generation, you have the thing called the Red Scare, you know, uh, I mean, it happened all over the world, but uh, I know more so about America, uh, and it was pretty heavy in America, where these kids were taught in school, communism is the worst thing in the world, and, and, uh, and basically everybody that we didn't like was a communist, you know, if you said something bad, you're a communist, and, and people lost uh, the meaning of what communism was, and and uh, it's just, it's an interesting thing. I mean, if you look up true communism, first off, true communism will never happen uh, due, to, due to human error. Um, but true communism is kind of awesome. It really is. How, uh, you know, every everybody's equal. I mean, just, there's a lot of really cool parts to it. Uh, again, it's never going to happen. It never has happened. Things we've called communists were not communists. Um, yeah, it's just, it's really interesting because... Uh, it's a whole term called the Red Scare, where if anything, like, all you had to do to convince people to get on your side was mention that the other person was a communist, and suddenly nobody wanted to be a communist or side with a communist, so they would, they would come and join you, you know? This thought was seen so realistically by many. And in this upcoming inevitable conflict, third parties such as Argentina could tip the balance one way or the other. Perón envisioned Argentina taking its place as a crucially important diplomatic third party in the war and emerging as an important actor on the world map. Knowing that these fugitive criminals were also anti-communist, the Argentinian president thought that these men would come in useful in the possible upcoming conflicts between the USA and the USSR. The Argentine president also sought to recruit more of these fugitives, in particular those with military and technological expertise that he believed could help his armies and technological advances. This thought was pretty much the same as in other cases. An example could be the United States and the Soviet Union, who both poached scientists to assist them True. in military and technological matters. Even if for so many, Argentina represented a new home, a new way to live, untouched and hidden, but the situation slightly changed. Time had passed and the Cold War dragged on. In time, these men would eventually be seen as they initially were. The support for them fled away with time. But Argentina oh, wow. okay. was not the only place in South America that accepted them. Many others eventually found their way to other countries in the region. Hundreds migrated to places like Brazil, Chile, Paraguay and other parts of the continent. For those who Argentina became an option after 1945, the situation changed just 10 years later, after Perón's government fell in 1955. There was a fear that the new administration might not see with good eyes their existence on Argentine soil and could send them back to Europe, mainly due to the new government's hostility towards Perón and all his former policies. Over time, Okay. The presence of so many became something of an embarrassment to the country. By the 1990s, most of these aged men were living openly under their own names. 
A handful of them were eventually tracked down and sent back for trials. They didn't even have to go under their false names anymore? They were that readily accepted? I mean, come on, man. Like, really? Many others have lost their mark and were assimilated into Argentina's sizable German community. And probably I can never see that. talked about their past again. Runners escaped to Argentina and South America through a system of escape routes called Rats Lines. These escape routes mainly led towards Latin America, particularly countries like Argentina, Chile, Paraguay, Colombia, Brazil, Uruguay, and others. There were two primary routes. The first went from Germany to Spain, then Argentina. The second one was from Germany to Rome to Genoa, then South America. This happened because of the willingness of some countries to accept these people and because some important figures who had a form of sympathy to them. But there is also another big reason for their escape to Argentina. Geography. Looking at the map of 1945, we can see that Europe was obviously not a good place to hide. Yeah. Even if some of these people found themselves oh. in countries like Portugal, Spain, or Switzerland. So yeah, I guess Switzerland or whatever up in the mountains, but I guess Argentina, it's got what, a whole mountain line along the western edge, doesn't it? Um, kind of, uh, what, isn't Chile over here or something? Uh, and then there's a mountain range right next to it. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Looking in the east, there was the Soviet Union, the conflict in China and Japan, and some allied colonies. Looking south, Africa was mainly a huge colony of France and Great Britain. Oh, uh, wow. In the west, there was the US and Canada. So the but only place the left US was Mexican the South border America. To the, south, the option to run seemed plausible. Considering all options, Latin America was the only part of the world where true chances for a new life existed, even if, after some time residing there, some of them were caught. And from all these states, Argentina seemed the best option, considering the openness of the Argentinian government at the end of the war to accept these criminals, collaborators, and others who fled. Okay, that makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. We want to thank you so much for watching this video. Oh, that's it. And to you know what? I want to thank you so much for watching this video, too. Uh, I mean, I guess that answers that. It makes sense. It's far away. The government was willing to accept them. Uh, there's already huge, you know, there's a huge population of Germans there. Um, or at least there was. Um, it just makes too much sense. It really does. Uh, anyway, hope you guys dug it. Uh, Till next time, this is Ace Asai. And I'm out.